Today we are working on tessellations. A tessellation is a form of art where there is no negative space. There is only positive space. In the end, it looks like the pieces all fit together like a jigsaw puzzle and overlap each other a little bit. In order to begin, you need a square of paper, um, minus three inches by three inches. It's also a kind of a heavier paper, that way as we use it as a pattern, it won't tear, it won't smudge. Um, you're also going to need a pair of scissors, and you're also going to need tape and a pencil. Okay? You will need a final piece of paper as well for your final product. Okay. So my first step is to figure out how I'm going to turn this square into a tessellation. Now, I want this to end up looking like a bunny, and I want the bunny's head to go up above a little bit, and I want the bunny's snout to go out to the side a little bit. In order to do so, I have to kind of think the opposite. So I need this to go out a little bit more than what my square allows, which means what I actually need to do is take some of my square from the opposite side and add it to this side. I'm going to go ahead and draw where I want my bunny's snout to begin. And I want it to kind of go like this, right? That's where I want it to go. So on this side, I'm going to go ahead and draw kind of a circle that I'm going to cut out. Um, I think that might be a little bit too flat. So I'm going to make it go in a little bit more just like this. I like that shape. That looks like a bunny's nose. Now, the other thing I need to think about is the ears that I want to come up above here and the top of the head that's going to match my snout here. I need to take that from the bottom. You're really thinking in opposites here, which I know is a little bit confusing, but I also know you can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the top of my head starting right at the corner and just a little whoop like this. And that's going to make the top of my head up here. Hopefully it connects perfectly with my snout to make it look like a bunny. Then I'm going to take the, a straight line up, maybe a straight line across a little bit to make it look like my bunny's ear is folded back a little. Okay? Now, here is where we have to figure things out. The, one of the most important things of tessellations is making sure things match up perfectly on one, on one side as they do on the other side. Now, luckily, we started on a corner. Whenever you have a corner, that is so much easier. Um, but when I don't have a corner, I'm going to want to use a ruler. And when I use my ruler, I use it to make a guideline. So. Whenever I'm trying to make a straight line with a ruler, my little secret is to line up the edge of the ruler with the edge of the paper. I also want to line it up with the line that I am using as my guideline. So I've got it lined up with the edge of my paper and with the bottom of my nose line. And I'm gonna draw a straight light line that goes all the way across my square, across my tessellation. That is going across that way. Now, when I look at this, I'm kind of worried this is going to be two pieces, which is fine. But in order to make sure that my guideline matches up well, I'm going to line up my ruler with the top edge of the paper and with that point where I want my shapes to touch. And I'm going to draw a very light line straight up like that. If you do not match things perfectly, when you go to do the jigsaw puzzle piece uh, where you're matching the tessellations together, it makes it so the pieces don't fit together perfectly and you end up with weird gaps throughout your work. Okay, now my next step is to cut these pieces out. So, it's really important at this step that you don't accidentally flip your shape over because if you shape flip your shape over it's not going to match perfectly so as of right now i've got it like this now i'm going to do thing, the same thing over here yep 
Luckily, since we drew it with pencil first, we know which side is the top and which side is the bottom. We also have the guidelines, so we can make sure all the pencil lines are always on the same. Sometimes you accidentally flip it over and then things don't match up. So we're going to flip it back this way and I'm going to rearrange all my pieces so they fit where I want them to fit. Ooh, see, this one's tricky a little bit because it's such, it's very similar on both sides. I have to really think and make sure that it's matching well. Okay. Now, the next step is to move my shapes to the opposite side. So I'm going to take this one and I want it to come over to this side, but I have to be careful not to just put it where I think it might go because I'm going, okay, this might work. It's not going to work because when I go to match my tessellations, they will not line up correctly. I need to line up my shape with the corner and with that guideline I drew. So I'm matching the corner and the guideline and I'm trying to make sure there's no empty space between my tessellation and the shape I'm adding on. Then I'm gonna use a piece of tape. Now sometimes we put the tape on and we're so focused on getting the shapes to line up that we let the, paint, the tape um, go off the edge of our tessellation. That causes problems, it's gonna make bumps in your final product. So you wanna make sure that the tape does not go off the edges. Now I'm going to do the same thing with these. Lining them up as perfectly as possible. Oh, and see, oh, I angle it, it's gonna work out just fine. Uh oh, nope, see that little bit of tape hanging off? So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm going to cut my tape in half. I would rather make my tape smaller than have anything come off the edge. But that's okay, because when I use that one, I'm going to need it anyways. So I'm lining it up perfectly. And I'm taping it down. There we go. I'm lining it up perfectly. Ooh, that's gonna be such a cute little bunny. And I'm taping it down. Okay, now I'm fine, ready for my um, actual final copy, my final project. Now at this point, I think I'm gonna use the clean side, which means I'm gonna have a, the bunny's gonna be looking um, to my left and not to my right, but that's completely fine. A lot of people think that you start at an edge and you work across. With tessellations, you do not do that because if you line it up, you've got all this empty space. With tessellations, you start right dab in the middle. Now, one thing I try to do when I am doing a tessellation is I look at my original square lines and I'm using my ruler because if my first square is not perfectly even, then all my other squares will go off the edges in weird ways. It's not gonna be a completely straight one. So, I think that looks about right. It's kind of hard to tell. Okay, I'm gonna make that my best. And now I'm going to go ahead and trace. I'm being very careful. It's okay to move slowly so that my tessellation does not move around. There is my first bunny. Okay, now I'm going to move it over. And I'm gonna line it up perfectly. At that point, my eyes were starting to mess with me thinking that it wasn't lining up well. You just have to trust the process. To work down, you match the bottom edge and you work all the way to the edge of the paper. On the side over here, I'm gonna work all the way to the edge of the paper. You may not be able to see that. Let's see if I can move it over. There we go. If I don't go off the edges, then my tessellation will have negative space around the edges of my work. And again, since tessellations do not have any negative space, I do not want that to happen. 
and let my entire paper fill up with tessellations. Now at this point, we are ready to add details. So I might go ahead and add my bunny's nose. And I might add some whiskers coming off the edge. My bunny's eye. I might add some pink ear inside of here. And there's my bunny. You can turn this into, he needs a mouth. He looks a little bit like a mouse. You could change the ears just a little bit and make them rounder to turn him into a mouse. You could use this shape here and make a cat out of these faces. There are so many options once you have the basic idea of how to make your tessellation pattern. Once you have that, you can turn this into just about anything you want.